Hello, good morning, good evening, whatever's in between. This is Kanonis, and in this video, I get to go on a ramble about one of my favorite games. Of course, it's Fire Emblem Three Houses. I wanted to talk about this simply just because it's five year anniversary, so five year time skip for everybody. And yeah, it ended up being one of my favorite games, one of my favorite Fire Emblem games, and in general, so. Why not talk about it? Before I start properly, I will say I don't have Cindered Shadows, so I've never played the DLC. I know a little bit about it, but not enough to go off of and not enough to speak on really. So that won't be a part of it. And I have three hopes in my game cabinet. I just haven't got around to playing it yet. I've also seen a little bit of that here and there, but I don't have anything to talk about it on it either. So, this video will simply just be base free houses. That's it. <laughs> I got this game maybe three, three years or two, two years into it being out. I think something around that. And I know part of what part of the reason I like this game so much is simply just because. <laughs> I happened to be playing it, both getting the footage for this video and when I first started playing it, during some <laughs> difficult moments of my life, so to speak. And, I don't know, something about that just added into the factor of this, or added on as a factor of making it my favorite game. Or one of them. <laughs> so, yeah, it's definitely got... I don't know, sentimental reasons for being there. But with that being said, I suppose I shall move on to the story first and foremost. I have played all four routes of this game and I've played Azure Moon twice. As as you know what I meant. Played Dimitri's route twice. Um So that'll be the basis for my story based stuff. My liked or most liked route changed a few times throughout me playing the game. I started off, like many people, playing Crimson Flower. I don't remember much of Edelgard's story, to be honest. It was a long time ago, and I haven't been back to it since. But I started off on that, thought it was pretty good. And then I moved on to... Lord's route. Simply just because the upside down Lord seemed kind of funny. <laughs> so I moved on to playing Claude's route second, doing Verdant Wind. And that ended up becoming my favorite out of those two. Um, as I said, I don't remember much on Edelgard, so I can't say much about it, apart from it's Edelgard. But Claude's is interesting a lot of it i was like why <laughs> one of the biggest things i was like why are we fighting nemesis of all people in claude's room what what connection do these two people have to each other compared to like dimitri or edelgard or raya like why why claude what is what is the purpose of that like it's a very odd person to have that with but anyway, yeah, I did Claude's route second. I like that a lot. Claude is actually my favorite lord of the group. I simply just prefer his character compared to Edelgard and Dimitri. I don't know. It's just how it is. Um, after that, it took me a while to get to, but I did Dimitri's route, and then I did Silver Snow as my last route. Now, once I finished playing through Dimitri's route, I ended up <laughs> again changing my likes, and I ended up preferring that over Edelgard and Claude's. And then, once I played Silver Snow, I kept the same opinion, so while it did change here and there, I would say my favorite route personally is the Blue Lions, simply just because it is, I don't know. 
I don't remember much of Edelgard's. I prefer Claude, but I prefer Blue Lion's Brute. It's just, it is what it is. The other thing I will say on Silver Snow, well, like, there is story reasons behind it. It always confused me that Raya was a boss. Like, <laughs> of all people to fight. And is she considered the Lord of Silver Snow? Because if she is, why is it not Sedith? Sedith should be considered the Lord of that route. Not Raya. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I just couldn't have a route where Raya lived. <laughs> but yes. Azure Moon ended up being my favourite route at the end of it. So, considering that is also most of the footage for this video, I guess I'll talk about that more. First and foremost, you start in White Clouds. White Clouds is the same for pretty much all of them. You got a few dialogue differences here and there, depending on the houses and who you choose, which is fine. I think meeting the lords uh, in in Ramaya, I think it is, against Kostas. I think that's fine. It gives you a small insight into the three of them before you go back to the monastery. It just, it works. You also meet Aloise there. <laughs> Simply just cause. <laughs> and then you go back to the monastery with them. So, that's fine. Choosing a house though. Uh, again, I chose Edelgard first. Simply just because she seemed the most interesting. Um, but yeah. Having like... Having the lords be able to talk about the people in their houses and then choose a decision off of that made things easier but also more difficult because it's like, I want to know about these other people, but I also want to go with who I want to go with first. Chapter 1, you end up going against the other houses as like a mock battle. It works. It does what it does. It shows people's skill. It shows how different units may work shows a little bit of the characters. It's the first battle, there's not much to it. Chapter 2, you go back, you defeat Kostas. That is where I think probably one of the better bits of characterization come in, because the the students quotes for when they take out an enemy is like, it's just a little bit of extra characterization there that just makes it work. I don't know, it's good. <laughs> Finished already? I was hoping for more of a challenge. Um, I find with white clouds, a lot of it seems to have to do with the blue lions. You've got um you know, chapter three where you have to defeat Lenardo and his rebellion, which has got to do with Ash. You've also got um Miklon, I think, in chapter five, which is Sylvain's older brother. So, I don't know, a lot of it seems very, like, it, it's very, like, not necessarily based on the Blue Lions, but it's very geared towards Blue Lions, more than anything, I think. And, of course, you can't forget about the one chapter where Vilas picks up the Sword of Creator and just swings it around, just but you know. As they do, simply just because they can. And Hanuman gets kind of mad about your crest and is like, "What? The, where'd you get this crest from? And then he's like, oh, never mind. It's the crest of flames. And at that moment, that is when I realized, and I was like, ah, oh, yes, of course. The main title, it's the Fire Emblem. Who would have guessed that Byleth himself is technically the Fire Emblem? All the while speaking to Sothis, as well, while oh, this happens. I didn't even mention Sothis. Sothis is there too. Sothis is just chilling with Byla, for the most part. Um, after a lot of that stuff, you got you know, things like Flame's chapter, where Flame gets kidnapped, and whatnot, and you fight the Death Knight, or Eureza, I suppose. <laughs> 
and Monica comes back. And now I, <laughs> I know she's in Three Hopes as a character. I don't like Monica. She bothers me, and personality-wise, she simply just does. I've got nothing on her really. It's just I don't know. Listening to her, I'm like, be quiet, Monica. Be quiet. Um, now, one of the things I do like is they have the Battle of the Eagle and Lion in Grondefield. Is that what it's called? It's Grondefield, isn't it? Yeah. In Gronder, anyway. Which is a very good... I guess it's foreshadowing. As foreshadowing towards the later battle in Gronder. Past the time skip. Which is good. They both have their cutscenes, they're both in Gronda, they're both the three classes, or three factions, going against each other. It's great. I like the battle. It's nice. Later on after that, you've got... Okay, chapter 9 is a whole thing. So... One of the clear things in Fire Emblem is that, for whatever reason, the main character is just not allowed to have alive parents, for some reason. And we have this happen in Chapter 9 as well, with Gerald dying. For some, like, it makes sense. But at the same time, you're allowed to keep the main character's parents alive, please. Like, I actually like Gerald, too. He was not a bad character. And then they got Monica to go after him, and I was like, oh, well, now what am I supposed to do? Like, <laughs> keep, keep, keep some of their parents alive, please. Seems to have a habit of doing that. Not to mention the fact that in this chapter, you also have the White Heron Cup, as well as, you know, choosing a dancer, which I usually go for Marianne with dancers. This time, I wanted to go with Felix, just for fun. <laughs> Felix as a dancer is a funny... Funny unit to me. Simply just because he would act like he wouldn't like it, but it really does on the inside. So, dancer Felix, this time around. On top of that, you also have the Goddess Tower. And, um... Uh, what is it called? the ball that they have for the anniversary of Garigma, which, yeah, that's fine, but all of those in one chapter is like, a big, big thing, like, it's a big chapter, I got past that chapter and I was like, alright, we still got more to go, okay, that, this is fine, I guess. <laughs> Later on after that, you go and you take out Solon. And Kronya, at one point, because, I don't know, Byleth is a big mad over losing their father. Makes sense. During this time, you, Byleth ends up fusing with Sothis, and becomes the Enlightened One. It is what it is. Fire Emblem characters seem to have Chosen One Syndrome, so... Except for maybe, like, Ike. So, yep. You get God Powers, and you come back from pretty much the Void. Later on, past that, you gotta go receive a revelation in the holy tomb, because Ray is like, oh, wow, you've got goddess powers now, look at you go! Go run with them. Anyway, go see, receive a revelation. So you go in there, you don't get a revelation because Sothis was already talking to you, and she disappeared. And then Ray is like, oh, well, that's problematic. And then the Flame Emperor walks in, tries to take a bunch of crest stones, you fight them, you realize it's Edelgard, if you're playing on blue lines, Dimitri goes absolutely insane out of his mind, and Felix is like, yeah, wow, who, who would have guessed? It's almost like I knew this guy had this side of him. Anyway, this is fine. And Edelgard ends up, well, I guess forcing, yeah, forcing her position as the Emperor, the of Emperor. and she the Empire, declares the war on the Church of Seraphs and Wraith, and I guess surrounding nations 
Simply by association. <laughs> she then invades Garigma. Raya turns into a dragon, or the Immaculate One. You fall down a cliff. And that's it. Until <laughs> the time skip. Bylas is just like, ah, oh, well, this cliff, this cliff looks nice. Might as well just fall down here and sleep for five years. <laughs> oh goodness. Now, again, this footage that I have for this video is Azure Moon. As I feel like I say Azure like four different ways. I don't know, but yes, I have the blue lines for this footage simply just because I wanted to. Anyways. After the time skip, Sothis wakes you back up, despite not being there. You get confused, and some random villager is like, Hey, oh, it's been like five years anyway, the monasteries have run with thieves. And Bylas like, alright, I'm off to go find my students. Don't call me stupid or insane, this is perfectly fine. <laughs> so you go back. Having, okay, I actually really like the reunion at dawn chapter and the time skip. Seeing everyone come back, even just to fight, you know, thieves and whatnot, but seeing your, like, seeing your class come back in, like, their own little sort of pairings and groups all together with all of their new design is so nice. They just show up and they're like, okay, we're all here. Take down these thieves and rerun the place. <laughs> now... Uh, during Azure Moon, you have a chapter where Randolph comes in and tries to invade, reinvade, I guess, Garigmark because they're like, oh, well, the Church of Saras seems to be getting itself back on the, back on its feet. Can't have that happening now. So he invades again, tries to take out everyone. Obviously, you stop him. You're like, nah, I'm taking the Church instead. And after that. Uh, Gilbert. Gilbert Gustav, whatever you want to call him. Gilbert talks about getting supplies and reinforcements from Rodrigue, or Felix's father. During this, they say to go to ALL, as it's like halfway in between. And then there's this little rat, this little spy, this little sneaky snake, who takes that information, runs with it to one of the territories, good Lord Gwendol. And it's like, hey, we need to stop these people getting reinforcements a deck at that. So you end up having to fight in ALM, but you come up and Rodrigue's just there and he's like, oh, Dimitri's back. Yay. We all thought he was dead. <laughs> but he's here now. Anyway, I've got supplies and reinforcements and your dad's a lance, by the way. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, great. Thanks. He leaves his territory in in um, the care of his younger brother, which is an interesting choice. <laughs> I, I kind of agree with Felix. It, it seems odd to me that the leader of a territory would leave. I understand why, but still, story purposes, I suppose. While Dimitri's gone insane, yeah, later up that, while Dimitri's gone insane, and is solely focused on taking out Edelgard, you end up going and capturing a great bridge. In my case, I, uh, while doing this, I ended up persuading Lawrence to come, La La yeah, Lawrence to come back, join my army. I wanted all the people, I'm one of those people who, I understand not having or not recruiting characters into your side, but like, I want them anyway, so. I, I'm one of those people who takes everyone. Like, I want all my characters. I don't want any of them to die. <laughs> so, took Lawrence back. Took a bridge at the same time. And then moved on to the second Rondafield battle. With all of their cutscenes. As Claude says, the horrendous class reunion. And also, this chapter, again, apparently characters cannot have living parents chapter where Randolph's younger sister uh, attempts to take out Dimitri, ends up taking out Rodrigue instead, as she does. And then, yeah, Rodrigue dies, Dimitri 
sees that, obviously, and is like, oh, well, guess I guess I better, you know, get my life together. <laughs> and get more reinforcements and come back from insanity. <laughs> so, they, they win the day. Edelgard is in that battle, gets harmed herself. Claude is also in that battle. And he gets harmed too, I think. Yeah, all three of them get attacked and whatever. But, you win. Go back to Garagmark, and Demetrius is like, okay, gotta make my apology. Now we gotta go take back the Kingdom Capital, though. We go turn around, take back the Kingdom Capital, and then we'll come back again. Again, we'll go in a loop, in a little circle. We can work it all out that way. So, end up going to Ferdiad, trying to take out Cornelia, which... I do realize now that Dimitri accidentally takes out, like, the primary leaders of those who slither in the dark. Like, took out Cornelia in Ferdiad. <laughs> took out Solon and Kronia. And then in the chapter after... In the chapter... <laughs> in the chapter after, you have to go and save Claude and take out Lord Arundel at the same time, who is also like, part of, I mean, he's not one, but he is one, he's also part of it, so he just completely accidentally wipes out, like, an organization, pretty much, <laughs> that he didn't even know was, like, occurring at the time, <laughs> just as he does, you know, uh, you get to a later part, where you finally, you save Claude, you get Fae or Nought from him, uh, and they finally go back on course to defeating Edelgar, in which case they come across Giant Fort, they take out the Death Knight for the final time, Mercedes is sad about it, understandable, it's her younger brother, so there's the night, then they run in to the streets of Enver, finally take out Hubert, because that guy retreats in so many different stages, like Hubert, go away! Please! You're a nuisance! <laughs> they finally take out Hubert, and they run into the castle, and Edelgard is basically transformed her own state to try and be able to realize her own goals. Into, is it Hegemon Edelgard? Is that what it is? What it's called, what it's considered. Anyway, it's it, it, it it's a creature. I'll say that much. It's a creature. But Dimitri's like, what is that thing? We've got to take her out anyway. He did try to reconcile with her at one stage before that point, but she was like, nah, our ideals are too different. Anyway, I'll see you later, stepbrother. But anyway, so they get to the final battle, and he's like, well, guess we got to take out Edelgard. And even then, at the end, he tries, he, he tries to like, keep her alive, and it's like, hey, we, we could try and work this out, right, it, it, it's fine, it would have been defeated, might as well just work it out anyway, but then she's like, nah, here's that one dagger from when we were children, anyway, and then Dimitri ends up winning, because Edelgard just couldn't let herself de be defeated, I guess. That's like the primary like rule of this game. It's like no lord can back down from their own thing. Except for Claude. <laughs> Claude is the only one who's able to sit there and be like, you know what, nah, this isn't worth my time. You end up fighting. You, you end up beating Edelgard. Claude's the only one who is able to work out. It's not worth his time. And yeah, after that, you just, you beat Edelgard. It's the end of the game, the end credits roll, your end cards pop up with all your characters. Unless you played classic mode and lost some, I don't know. I was one of those people who didn't play classic mode. I like to keep my characters alive. So. And that's basically it. Obviously that changes depending on the roots. But Azure Moon ended up being my favourite, so I did that for this video. And that's that, I guess, for the story. I like the story, it's pretty good, I think the characters is what really makes it better, but the story in itself is quite good, 
I think having a three-way faction, though there is a lot to it, and there's a lot of questions unanswered. I don't know if they get talked about in Hopes, I don't know if they get talked about in Cinder Shadows, because I just don't know yet. But, yeah, apart from that, the story is good. Uh, yeah, I like it a lot. So, I guess I gotta move on to gameplay then. I really like the gameplay in this game. I played Awakening, I played Bates, I played Engage, and I played a small amount of uh, Shadows of Valencia on the 3DS. And I can say I I really do like this one's gameplay in particular. It, it just is better, in my opinion. I even think it's better than Engage's. Engage's is just... It's similar. But it's just not, it's just not it, you know? <laughs> this one's better to me. There are, I suppose classes is the first thing. There's a lot of classes for people. Though it is a bit weird how some of them are locked. Like the, the Sky Knights, whatever they're called. Pegasus Knights ones. Things like that. And the Gremory. Some of the mages. It, it's kind of weirdly locked. <laughs> Them. But other than that, yeah, it's a good amount of classes. You can arguably put almost anyone in almost any class. Obviously, there's classes that are more, you know, well suited to different units for whatever their strengths or their boons and their banes are and whatnot. But meh, it's fine. <laughs> you can still do it anyway. <laughs> I've made Felix of all people, a bunch of different things here and there. He's worked well enough in either one, but then again, that's also Felix, so. Eh. Training Byleth in the monastery, either using the faculty members or using pretty much everyone after the time skip, I think. It, it's a bit slow in trying to upgrade things, but I think it's fine still. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like it could be done a little bit better. Because it is kind of annoying to get Byleth stats up sometimes. Especially if you're trying to recruit people. But it's fine. On that though, recruiting. I like recruiting. I, again, like I said... I'm a person who recruits everyone, simply just because I do. I'm like, I want the paralogues. I want the items from their paralogues. I want the characters. Give, give them all to me. Like, I'll take them all. <laughs> They're mine now. So, I recruit everyone. I understand there are people in hopes that are locked, which I think is good, simply just for story reasons. There's a lot more they can do with some locked people. So... Yeah, I, it's, I like recruiting, but I also see the appeal of some people being locked in a route. Yeah, it, it is what it is. Um, the specific, like, items, I guess. The weapons, or a staff, or even Felix's shield. The specific crest items, they're good, they make sense, they fit in, but I never actually used them that much, apart from Felix's shield, and I can't remember what it's called, the one you get from Lawrence's parallel. I use those all the time. I didn't even use the Sword of the Creator that much, I usually use them in like, bigger battles. Or I need, I, I guess, more reliable weapons. I did use them in this in this playthrough for this footage, but apart from that, I never really used them all that much. They're nice to have there, though. <laughs> um, one of the, I think, it's not a problem, but it's a problem is that there is a lot in three houses to think about. Even every time you go into a battle menu, you've got to think about abilities, 
you've got to think about battalions. You've got to think about whether or not you like need to forge your weapon or repair your weapons, or maybe you need to reclass someone, or um, or you have like the weapon abilities. I can't remember what they're called right now. <laughs> There's a lot to think about. You get used to it pretty quickly, and you can always go and look into your guides and tutorials and have it explained. But, I don't know, they work, they're there, they're good, I think they're good there, but there is a lot, there are th times where I've like completely forgotten about some things and I'm like, oh wait, that's a thing, that's right. Battalions is usually the one I forget. <laughs> it, it, just, it just is. The one I forget about all the time. But, yeah, I don't know. It, it's good, it works. For the most part. I forget. But, eh, it's probably more of a me thing. Uh, Gameplay-wise, walking around the monastery itself. Now, people, at least from what I've been able to see, tend to like the Somnial from Engage better than the monastery to walk around. I am kind of the opposite. I actually prefer the monastery. Maybe just because I, I like it more. I don't know. It is big, it can be annoying to get around, especially those NPCs. The amount of times I have walked into a wall, I have walked into an NPC who is just standing there. I, <laughs> or one that's walking and won't move out of the way. And it's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> but other than that, that's fine. You've got the amiibo gazebo, which... I think that's in Engage as well. Gives you enough. <laughs> think of the ami amiibo of Gazebo though, when you go into it. In White Clouds, Sothis is there, right? It makes sense, it's just the holy tomb. It gives you items, Sothis is sitting there. But after you merge with Bi- uh, Merge with Byleth? Merge with Sothis? When you go in there, it's just the other Byleth standing there. And it's like... They're standing there. So awkwardly. It's like, why are you here? Why, why are you here? I understand Sothis isn't here, but why are you here? Like, what, what is, what's the point of that? What are, you, what are you doing here? But yeah, I like the Amiibo Gazebo. Gives you good stuff. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Continuing on with the Monastery Tour. The Lost Items. Now, I think... <laughs> The lost items are part of the way to get your support up with other characters, which is fine, but they are everywhere, and there are so many, and it's like, how forgetful are these people that they're dropping their items 24-7? Why? <laughs> At this point, I think they're just dropping them on purpose, just so they can talk to Myla. <laughs> Come on now. How do you keep dropping your stuff? Like, goodness. You also have gardening, which is fine. It works well. You can either plant flowers or seeds or, yeah, fruit, vegetables, whatever. You get your stuff. It, it's, it's gardening. <laughs> Same thing with fishing. Fishing can take a long time, especially if you're doing Flane's fishing quest. Flane, why? Why have you done this to me? Luckily I was fortunate enough to get like, I think I got it on the first try. Her, her required, her, her requested fish. Flames requested fish. But yes, fishing can be kind of annoying. It can kind of take a long time. Especially if you have a lot of bait. It, but I also kind of like it. I don't know. It, it's good. It's fine. It's there. <laughs> uh, you can use whatever you've done with gardening and fishing in cooking. You can either cook and give everyone um, stats, or you can sit down and have meals with everyone, get your support up with them. Which I like the meals actually. I, I like the meals, I like that some of them have different conversations with people. Depending on who they're with. 
he just walks out. I don't know. It's pretty good. It's fine. Outside of the monastery, and going sort of back to the the classes type thing, you have you you have like the regular weekly. Um. What is it called? What what is what is the actual thing called? Where you train them and you instruct them and you give them experience in their like weapon or whatnot. What is it called? The what what it what is that? <laughs> that thing. Um yeah, anyway that. When you like train them, train them up in their skills and get their like required weapons or abilities further along so you can put them into different classes. It also helps with support. It's fine. It does its thing. It actually works pretty well. Makes sense. Byleth is a professor at that point in time, so yeah. <laughs> it works. It does its job. Outside of that is more... <laughs> I've, gone, I've gone about this in like a loop. Going back to the battle stuff, you've got the auxiliary battles to get like, um, gold or food or ore for your weapons. I think that works fine. It also gives you experience for your units. It just works. <laughs> it makes sense. In those battles, you can also have the quests people give you around the monastery. And you have Paralux as well. One of the things I like about a lot of the Paralux is that they tend to, at least for the most part, some of them are kind of weird, but they tend to, like, give like a little bit more in story regarding, regarding people. Like, you've got Ingrid's paralogue, which ties into her, you know, marriage problems and her father continuously finding marriage suitors for her. We've got Sylvain's, which is cleaning up the rest of the bandit group that Mithlan led. You know, you've got the paralogues, the Dew's paralogue. The Dew's paralogue is what is the deciding factor as to whether or not he even comes back later on in the story, so... Yeah, you've got that as well. The paralogues work. It's fine. It is what it is. The NPCs in battles, though, like the ally NPCs. <laughs> oh my goodness. Catherine, during Leonardo's battle. She out here trying to take my XP or something, I swear. Like, Catherine, leave. <laughs> go, go away. <laughs> You're annoying me. That... And the other one is Rodrigue. He cannot, for the life of him, stay in a spot that is actually useful and not in the way. Rodrigue, get out of the way. Please. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's that. It works. <laughs> for the most part, the NPCs can be kind of annoying, especially when they just run in head first. Please stop. <laughs> but, yeah, it works fine. The gameplay's good. One thing I didn't talk about was tea time as well. I like tea time a lot. It's good. Yes. I appreciate tea time. Oh, I want more tea times. <laughs> but yeah, I think that will be it for gameplay. And now, I move on to the characters themselves. Characters, characters, characters. I have some opinions on characters. I will say, I I don't actually think I like full-on hate a character in this game. The only one I can think of is Gilbert. Now... I, I've tried to like look past his Annette problems and his fatherly issues 
But I just, even trying to look past that, I'm like, Gilbert, shut up. Go away. You're annoying. Leave me alone. Please. I don't know. Something about him. I'm like, Gilbert, Gilbert, be quiet. Gustav. <laughs> He's the only one I can think of that I like. Really just, th there is nothing redeeming him for me, to be honest. <laughs> Apart from that, yeah, I don't really hate anyone. I've got ones I dislike. I don't really hate anyone. Though. So I'll start off at the bottom. Dislike-wise. I don't think this one is really that out there. I don't like Leonie, <laughs> to be honest. She bothers me. She annoys me. I tried to look past her Gerald infatuation but and i will say she does have some nice support supports with people who do show more than just hey look it's gerald but i just i don't like her personality <laughs> she's just not i don't know she's just not a character for me uh i think above that is actually I do not like Dorothea. Same sort of thing. I can get past for like, oh, I'm just out here for nobles kind of thing. Can't stand her personality though. For some reason. Like, she's well written. Don't get me wrong. The characters in this game are fairly well written, even when I don't like them. But Dorothea, same problem. I just, I, I can't, I can't with her personality. It's just not my kind of personality. It is what it is. I don't particularly like Dorothea. Apart from that, I think they're like the main two characters that I don't like. Most other people I'm more so indifferent on, or or I actually just like them regularly. But again, that extends to most of the cast. So, <laughs> I think. There were people who definitely redeemed themselves. I did not like them in the beginning, and they redeemed themselves, and I actually do like them now. One of those, I guess, was probably the Lorenz. I don't think he's that bad. Ferdinand? I'm more on indifferent on Bernadetta, to be honest. She kind of annoys me sometimes. Uh, another redeeming person would probably be the... Pro probably be Sedith. Sedith. Caspar as well. Uh, Hubert was another one as well. I actually didn't really like Hubert that much in the beginning, but then I saw a few of his support, a few more of his supports here and there, and I was like, you know what? Nah, he's, he's, he's great. He can stay. <laughs> Hubert's great. Manuela. Manuela is another one too. I, I am not your typical, like, I, I don't find much interest in, like, the characters who are always, always drinking or, you know, whatever, talking about their relationship issues. I actually like Manuela. I think she's funny. <laughs> she's great. I like her a lot. She really did get up there. I think one of the biggest ones in this category, though, is probably Sylvain. I didn't like Sylvain in the beginning. I don't tend to like his character trope that much. But again, these characters are quite well written for the most part. And Sylvain, he, he got up there. I actually do really like him. He's, he's quite high on my list now. He, he's just chilling out there. <laughs> he's just hanging out, doing his Sylvain thing. He's Sylvain. Otherwise, like I said, most people I'm also just indifferent towards, like, I, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, I, I like them, I think they have funny dialogue, yeah, <laughs> that's about it though. Now, moving on to my, my favourite characters, and I will again move from like the bottom to the top with this as well. I really, I will say first more and foremost, I actually, well, he's not one of my favorites. He's still probably in the indifferent category. I actually unironically like Cyril 
I don't particularly like, um, I, I don't particularly like characters like Cyril, generally. They tend to bother me. C Cyril and Catherine, both. <laughs> or the Raya lovers. <laughs> both of them, they were kind of meh in the beginning. I ended up quite liking both of them in the end. Cyril just, he looks, he's that kind of guy where like, I see him and he's like, and it's like, oh, that's, that's, that's just everyone's younger brother, you know? Like, like, that, that's just, he's everyone's younger sibling. Everyone's looking out for him. He's kind of just there doing his own thing. It, Cyril's just everyone's younger brother. <laughs> yeah, Catherine. I ended up liking Catherine in the end. Moving back on to actual favorite wise. I, I think a lot of people find her to be kind of one note. I really like Petra. I think she's adorable. Her not learning the language in the five years actually does kind of make sense considering she does go back to Bridget in that five years. So she probably didn't have to use her Fodlan skills <laughs> in Bridget. But I don't know, that's how I see it. I like Petra. I also like Ash. He's also just adorable. It's Ash. <laughs> it's Cinnamon Roll. He's doing his own thing. Yeah. <laughs> the other two? Probably Linhart and Marianne. I really like Marianne. It's, most of these characters I just find adorable. Marianne is another one of those. I think she's adorable. I want to protect her at all costs. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I'm here, Marianne. She's always one of my first recruits. Yes, Linhart is the other one. He's just... He's that guy, you know? He, he's, a, he's not here for anyone. He's not here for anyone besides naps. You know? He, he just wants to sleep. <laughs> and honestly... Fair enough, Linhart. Fair enough. <laughs> the big three... I have three big favorites in particular. The third one is Lysithia. I, she to me is what I imagine to just be. Cyril's everyone's younger brother. Lysithia's everyone's younger sister. She would absolutely hate me if I said that, but to me she's just everyone's younger sister. Her supports are great. She's kind of <laughs> moody <laughs> in the beginning of them and then kind of chills out by the end. Her supports with Catherine actually are really nice. Just seeing them interact and talk about how their crests apparently affect the weather and how they both have secrets and they both respect that is great. I like it. It's nice. My Scythia herself, it's hard to explain because I can I can kind of understand some of the mentality she has in a way like or not mentality but more so personality rather than anything it just I don't know it's a personality that makes sense to me <laughs> again she's just everyone's younger sister to me I ended up I end up pairing her with Linhart all the time Simply just because I want, I want to save her. <laughs> I, I would much prefer her ending with Cyril, but I, I, I pair her with Linhart specifically just so I'm like, you need to be saved. And I can't with Hanneman because I, I can't stand Hanneman, actually. <laughs> he bothers me. He's down there with Dorothy and Leone. <laughs> Go away, Hanneman. So yes, Lysithia. Lysithia is in third. She is... S small, small, precious human. Second, on this list, my second favorite character is our upside down lord man, my favorite lord. It's Claude. <laughs> I uh, did his goddess tower and S support on Verdant Wind, and I always do that on Verdant Wind simply just because he, he, he just is. He's kind of mysterious. He's got... He's, he's very intelligent, but in like... In a Hubert kind of way. It's like... 
He knows how to get under people's skin. He knows how to mess with people. He does it all the time. It's funny to me. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how much... I don't know how to explain it, really. But yeah. He ended up being my second favourite. I like his supports for people. For the most part, some of them are kind of weird. Like, his Ingrid support is always so strange to me. But... Yeah. Apart from that, Claude. Claude is my second favourite. He's great. I like him a lot. And he's there. <laughs> he's, he's the Verdant Wind S support. That is what I deem him as. The Verdant Wind S support. Now. The first and foremost. My favourite of all favourites. The one and only. The, the only person I can... I can even get myself to S support on any other route. Does not matter. You know, apart from Verdant Wind. I cannot... Cannot get myself to S support anybody else. And it's Felix. My favourite character... Is Felix. He's... He's a grumpy... He, he's just grumpy. <laughs> he's just mad. All the time. <laughs> I could go on and on. All day. About this guy. I probably shouldn't, but I could. <laughs> Felix to me is, first and foremost, I, I agree with most of his, like, opinions on things. His, his ideas regarding, like, knighthood and chivalry are something I personally agree on. That's just me. <laughs> so I can understand him there. Personality-wise, He's not great at showing his own emotions towards people. Well, he's great at being mad at people. But <laughs> showing that he cares. You can see it in between. You know, if you read in between the lines. And you see, like, see what he's actually saying. You can tell that he cares. He's just not great at showing it. And that's perfectly fine. I ended up doing, yeah, <laughs> I actually only have Claude and Felix's goddess tower scenes. I just can't bring myself to do anyone else. <laughs> it's just, it just is what it is. Felix is my favorite. His goddess tower scene is actually hilarious to me. He's literally just sitting there like, you know what, nah, I don't like you, but also don't get a cold. Because <laughs> then I won't have a training part. Like, yes, Felix, we understand. <laughs> you and your cat-like ways. <laughs> Got a cat that's in the monastery standing next to him that's, like, the exact same as him. It's like, the two Felixes standing next to each other. <laughs> Felix the cat. <laughs> Not to mention, Felix himself is also, from what can be seen, relatively intelligent as well. He was one of the few people who ended up, you know, suspecting Yuritsa simply just because of the way he trained using a sword. Like, Felix, who, who figures that out? <laughs> who looks at the way someone's handling a sword and is like, nah, you know what, that is suspicious. That is very suspicious. <laughs> like, yes, okay, Felix. <laughs> Also, his dialogues towards towards Dimitri in particular. The fact that he is actually, for the most part, correct. I, I know he is a little bit hypocritical in his whole, like, ideals thing of being like, you know what, your ideals. Especially towards people like Ingrid. He's, like, really mad over them having, like, their own ideals, but also... He's also fighting for his own ideals at the same time, and it's like, Felix, Felix, if, if you realized, you know, it, it, it's like the same thing you're, you're also doing. It's, it's, it's people fighting for their beliefs, Felix. <laughs> Just like Cetus told you, Felix. <laughs> and I will say that, his support with Cetus is great. I also quite like Cetus. Seeing, seeing their supports together, it, it, it's really good. He knows 
how to talk to Felix. Felix responds in his own polite way. And it, it just works. It just works out. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, he supports with people like Lysithia and Annette and Bernadetta, actually. Are <laughs> honestly just adorable. They just. Their, their supports that show that this dude is just... <laughs> He's not as much as a grump as people think he is, you know? He's still trying to look out for people, and he's still kind of a dork when it comes down to it. But he's also still kind of moody. And he really, he apparently really has a thing for singing, like... He supports with Annette, he supports with Dorothea. Dude just really likes singing. He, 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 that's just it. He does like singing. Uh, okay. just this once. So, yes. You're interested in, uh, when it comes to characters, you can sing. I'm sorry. characters are all written so? quite well. At least I think they are. For the most part. There are definitely some parts here and there and some dialogue where I'm like, what? where did that come from? But, for the most part, I would say they're written particularly well. I suppose I should get a give a special special shout out to everybody's favorite of course the gatekeeper i don't I, i've never met a person who hates the gatekeeper i i don't know how anyone could he's just adorable he's just he, he lives there being the gatekeeper of the monastery he's keeping everyone safe we love gatekeeper yes <laughs> but yeah characters are written really well there was, Gilbert is really, and I guess kind of Hannah Man are the only ones I really don't like. Like, really don't like. Most people I'm kind of indifferent forward towards. I, I sort of do have, like, you know, people I do like, or people I like less in that category as well, but there's too many characters for that. <laughs> My favorite Lord has always been Claude. I think Byleth. Byleth as the main character, I actually don't mind. I know a lot of people have dislike or do like Byleth. I, I am sitting in that kind of middle. I, I, I don't mind Byleth. It could be done better, I, I, but I do still quite like Byleth. Same thing with Sothis. Sothis is kind of strange. Sothis and Raya, there's something about them where I'm just like, I, I don't mind you as characters, but also yeah, go go away. At the same time. But yeah, apart from that, I've got my three favorites. I've got Lysithia, everyone's little sister. I've got Claude, our upside down lord, and leader man. <laughs> As per the words of Judith. And my all time favorite, Mr. Felix. Go find a husband for Aldarius over there. <laughs> Dude who activates his crest way too many times in one go <laughs> doesn't let anyone else get a kill when i'm trying to give everyone pe pe give everyone xp felix please <laughs> but yeah that is it for the characters and that is it in general for this three houses ramblings i suppose it's here it's five year anniversary. I love this game a lot. I could play through it like six times over and not be bored. That's just how it is. <laughs> but anyway, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. It's my first proper analysis video on the channel. It's one of my favorite games. As I was saying, I hope everyone enjoyed. And that's it for now, I guess. Cheers, everyone.